Okay, so uh, let's just start with the, with the last talk. Uh, Andy Wilson from um, the Portland State University, or you're moving to Kennesaw. Yeah, you can see State the boxes University. behind me, yeah. <laughs> and he will be talking about Vandermont in cyberspace. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak and for putting on such a nice conference, and especially this session. Um, I'm going to touch on both Josh and Sean's work, and they gave such nice talks, so it'll be, understanding my talk will be easy by uh, after, after their great talks. All right, so yeah, this is about uh, what we'll call Vandermonds in Superspace, and joint work with Brendan Rhodes, who I believe is in the chat if you have questions. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a kind of general recipe for building symmetric group modules. This is certainly not the only way to do this, but this is one way. Uh, we're going to pick a polynomial from some space with a symmetric group action. We're going to anti-symmetrize the polynomial, usually just the monomial, actually. So we're going to compute this sum where we sum over all the permutations and uh, permute the polynomial and give it some plus or minus sign according to the permutation. And we're going to apply some differential operators, some symmetric differential operators to this anti-symmetrization. Anti and the result is going to be a graded SN module. So to give an example, the kind of classical uh, example of doing this is what's called the, the Vandermann matrix or Vandermann determinant. So we're going to start with this monomial, this kind of descending staircase, or just staircase monomial and n variables. And the symmetric group acts by permuting these variables. And this allows us to anti-symmetrize. So just a little toy example here, when n equals 3, our staircase has uh, x1 squared, x2 to the first, and x3 to the zeroth. It's kind of depicted by this first diagram on the left here. And then we just move the boxes around between columns in all ways, getting a, a sign as, as we do this. And this is our anti-symmetrized version of what I'm calling V3. OK, so once we do this, we need to take some derivatives. And we're just going to take all possible partial derivatives in the x variables. And we're going to get what I'll call this bold face or this capital VN. And it's graded by the degree of the, the monomials. So continuing our n equals 3 example, if I take a partial derivative in x1 and x2, the only terms that survive are these two here. And you can think of these if you want as like they're the only shapes which fit these kind of dots in the first two columns under their boxes. Uh, I mean, these diagrams, I'm not going to use them very formally. But if your eyes kind of glaze over when you see lots of monomials and so on, then maybe this is a more useful way of thinking about it. All right, so what are we looking for when we do this process? Um, well, we can, given such a module M, we can decompose it into its pieces, and we can decompose each piece into the irreducible or the, the spec modules and look at how many times each spec module appears. This is uh, related to Josh's talk earlier. Uh, and we can study certain generating functions. So the Hilbert series just as a polynomial which tracks the dimension of each graded piece, and the graded Frobenius series is a graded symmetric function, which also keeps track of how often each spec module appears in each graded piece by replacing each spec module with a sure function. So we end up with a graded symmetric function there. And we might hope that these are interesting or really, you know, have nice formulas or something like that. So going back to this classical Vandermann case, uh, this is just a rephrasing of uh, what um, Josh stated earlier, but uh, the Hilbert series is the Q analog of n factorial, and the greater Frobenius series here is given by uh, the major index over standard Young Tableau. Or you can also think of this as a certain type of modified Hall-Lidwood polynomial. And in particular, if I don't care about the grading, this Vandermond uh, module is isomorphic to the regular representation of the symmetric group. Okay, so this is kind of the, the classical setting. And we're going to, um, I guess I should list a couple other examples here. You know, there's not just one case where this is interesting. These have also been mentioned, but um, if you, Garcia and Prochese use this process to obtain hall Lidwood polynomials as created for Beanie series. Garcia and Heyman, uh, they get looking at bi-graded Frobenius series, they get the modified McDonald polynomials. And Heyman also showed that if you start with a certain module of diagonal harmonics, you get a nice, uh, this is nabla of EN. This is kind of the object at the center of the shuffle theorem. It's a McDonald polynomial operator applied to the elementary symmetric function EN. 
And what we're going to do is to take this idea into what we'll call super space. So this is a kind of a, a popular trend, you might say. Um, and what super space is, is uh, this, this tensor product here. So we have polynomials in the x variables and the exterior algebra and what I'm going to call the theta variables. So there's two types of variables. The x variables commute with each other. The x and the theta variables commute with each other and the theta variables anti-commute. In particular, theta i squared is always zero for any i. So at the bottom of this slide, I've just done a little sample computation here. We can move the x's past the thetas for free, but if we want to move a theta past another one, we pick up a sign. Okay, so this is superspace. And why should we work in this space? Well, there's a nice bi-grading. I can permute the x and y degrees simultaneously, so there's a nice diagonal assign action. Um, it appears, I don't know about first, but often in the study of mathematical physics, so you can think of the x variables as representing bosons and the theta variables as fermions, or you can think of these as polynomial differential forms, um, since there's an exterior algebra. And uh, when I first made this slide, I said it was relatively unexplored in algebraic combinatorics. I had to put quotes around this because this is becoming less and less true. So there's probably a dozen papers in the last year in this area, including papers by uh, uh, a paper by Josh in here and uh, lots of other people. So uh, what kind of modules are we going to look at in, in superspace? Uh, this is kind of a, our first sample is going to be this, this module here. So I'm going to start with a certain super monomial, which looks like the staircase, except it kind of falls off a cliff at some point. So I've taken the first n minus k steps here and just replaced them with thetas and, and no, no powers of the xi's. So this is the formal definition of u, n, k here. And um, you, you can see that if uh, k is n, we recover the, the Vandermann case here. There's no, no theta variables in that diagram. OK, so we can still anti-symmetrize. Uh, the fact that the theta variables are anti-commutative means that we don't get 0. We get something. Uh, so here's just a little toy example. If we start with n equals 4, k equals 2 case, these are some of the super monomials we get in that expression. In fact, everything comes with a factor of two because switching the two theta variables doesn't do anything. And um, once we've done this, we can take the x derivatives, uh, just x derivatives for now. The result is going to be graded by x degree. And our, our first theorem is that, uh, again, some familiar objects here, we get our dimension is this nice quotient of factorials, and the greater Frobenius is a certain Hollywood polynomial. Only the hook-shaped types actually appear here. Um, and this can also be thought of as a cohomology of a Springer fiber. Uh, it's not clear exactly if we can get the non-hook Hollywood polynomials through this process. Seems like maybe by taking various quotients of these types of things, we can get many of them, but uh, it's, it's not, not clear yet. The hook-shaped ones are the only ones that appear in such a nice way. All right, so I'm going to spend the rest of my time talking about uh, what I'll call the superspace Vandermann. So we're going to go through this similar process, but we're going to start with a different super monomial. And the only difference here is that for the first n minus k terms, instead of eliminating all the powers of x, I'm just going to kind of flatten out my staircase. So this is the monomial I start with here for n equals 10 and k equals 6. So I have kind of uh, four flat steps at the beginning and then I staircase down. And I'm going to look at the span of all the x derivatives applied iter iteratively to this, uh, the anti-symmetrized version of this monomial. And then the result is going to be graded by x degree as I take partial derivatives that changes the x degree. All right. So our kind of, I'd say, main theorem is on this slide. So first of all, the, the Hilbert series is given by a certain Q analog of this is the number of ordered set partitions into k blocks or number of surjections from n elements to k elements. Uh, so we have the q analog of k factorial, and then we have a certain q analog of Stirling numbers of the second kind. You kind of just qify the recursion and you get uh, our expression here. And the greater Frobenius series you can obtain by taking um, this delta prime operator applied to en. So this comes from the delta conjecture, as Sean mentioned earlier. 
uh, the result is a symmetric function whose coefficients have q and t variables, and you just set the t to zero. So if you throw away half of those, and you get this uh, graded Frobenius series here. All right, so this says that there's some kind of relationship between this module and the theory of McDonald polynomial eigenoperators and ordered set partitions and these sorts of objects. All right, uh, so for the rest of my time, I'm going to look at uh, bigraded versions of this. So I'm going to start with the same kind of seed, the same super, super monomial, this uh, super space Vandermann one. But instead of just taking X variables, I'm going to introduce some other variables. I'm going to polarize, as, as you heard about from Francois earlier, I'm going to take some theta derivatives and have some, get some bigraded modules out. Uh, we can prove some things about these, about these modules, but there will be a lot more conjectures from, from, from this sort of thing. All right, so I'm going to start with the same super monomial as before, except now I'm thinking about this as living in a space with two sets of commuting or bosonic variables, x's and y's, and one set of kind of anti-commuting variables. And I'm going to take x derivatives, also y derivatives, and I'm going to apply what are called polarization operators. So this is a kind of standard way to introduce y variables when you just start with x variables. And the result is graded by x and y degree. I'll denote it with this kind of uh, blackboard capital V here. So our conjecture is that you get the full uh, symmetric function from the delta conjecture. You don't have to set t to zero anymore. You get, um, when you take the bigraded Frobenius series, you get delta prime sub ek minus one of en. So this will give a module representation of the delta conjecture if, if proved. And I should mention here, um, this is not the only suggested module kind of interpretation of the delta conjecture. So our work is partially inspired by a conjecture of Zabraki. So this is kind of the co-invariant side of the coin. If you start with the same two sets of bosonic and one set of fermionic uh, variables, and you look at the SN invariant elements with no constant terms, you can quotient out by the ideal they generate and you get kind of the co-invariance of the space. And Zabraki conjectured that when you look at the now trigraded for Frobenius series, because we have three variables, x, three types of variables, x, y, and theta, if you look at any coefficient of a z term, you get a, a nice delta operator expression. So that kind of would capture all the delta operator symmetric functions in, in one go. Um, and actually, our, our work started as hoping that maybe the kind of harmonic or Vandermann version of this would be easier to approach than the co-invariant version. And that's been true a little bit. I mean, our, our t equals zero result is to my knowledge not known in the co-invariant version. Um, but overall, we, we still don't know um, how, how to kind of close this loop. So we conjecture that kind of the natural way to inject these modules into this quotient ring is a bijection, but um, still open. Okay. All right, so uh, the last type of derivative I'm gonna talk about is uh, forget about y variables for at least a little while. Uh, we're just gonna have the x and theta variables. And now we're gonna take derivatives, sort of theta derivatives. So what I do is, well, if I'm trying to take the derivative of theta i, if it appears, I just remove it and I pick up a sign depending on where it appears in the theta monomial. And if it doesn't appear, then I send that monomial to zero. So for example, if I remove theta one from this expression, I get a plus sign. If I remove theta three, I get a, a minus sign. It turns out then we get an action of the space on itself by taking derivatives. So to give it a polynomial, turn it into a derivative and use you know, linear to the derivative and the product row and so on to uh, have the space act on itself. So starting from the same superspace uh, kind of seed, super monomial, we're going to take the x and the theta derivatives, and we're going to get a bigrading. And I'm going to call this bigraded module w sub nk. And it's not hard to check that these are kind of the maximum degrees in the x and theta part. If you look at the original super monomial, I'm mostly using this as kind of a notation for the next slide. So what can we say about this, uh, this bigraded sn module? So this is just the n equals 4, k equals 2k. So I have the x grading going across the top here and the theta grading going down, down the side. Uh, and I've decomposed each part into spec modules or sure functions if you like to think about the graded Frobenius instead. 
So it's kind of uh, automatic that the top row is this VNK module again, because before we just didn't take any theta derivatives, so we just don't take any theta derivatives, we get this top row back. And the bottom row, we get uh, this quotient ring that uh, appeared in Sean's talk, so it's defined by Hagelin, Rode, and Shimizono as starting with polynomials and x variables and taking a certain quotient, certain elementary symmetric functions and kth powers of xi's. And uh, Pawlowski and Rhodes showed that this is related to the cohomology or is the cohomology of the moduli space of spanning n tuples of lines in CK. Um, but the kind of non-trivial uh, part of this theorem is that this is this table is under is invariant under this certain action, which is you apply omega, so you um, twist by the sign or you conjugate the partition, and then you just 180 degree rotate the table. So you know, pick up your your computer monitor and do this and uh, apply omega and you get the same table back. All right. It's still unknown exactly what a closed formula would be for each piece in this table. Uh, we have some ideas in that direction, but um, nothing's closed yet. All right, so uh, I'm gonna finish by mentioning a, cup, a couple geometric-like properties of this WNK module, this one that's bi-graded by the x and the theta variables. And um, some of these are, we've proved, some of them are still conjectural, uh, but they're kind of, uh, our proofs are all algebraic and we'd like them to be the kind of shadow of some geometric object. So we have some type of Poincare duality and some type of hard left shets, but we don't know what the geometric object is. We can just kind of prove by hand that it has some, some version of this. So one, I'd say the main open question in my opinion is, uh, are we looking at the geom, you know, the, the cohomology of some, some nice geometric object or is it, are we just lucky or something? It seems unlikely, but. So let me say what, more about what I mean by this. Uh, so I'll call this property super Poincare duality. So we can think of this module as a quotient where we start with the super polynomials and we mod out by all the polynomials that annihilate this um, anti-symmetrized superspace Vandermann. And then we can multiply in this quotient on the right. And what we proved is that uh, if you start in some sp uh, particular piece on the bigrading, say the i and j graded piece, and you multiply by the kind of dual piece across this table, then this is a perfect pairing. Uh, so in the case where there's a single grading, this is one way to think about Poincare duality. Um, and we really like to know if there's some kind of uh, other reason for this. We basically prove this by analyzing analyzing this, this map, uh, showing certain pairings non-degenerate. And it would also help, I think, uh, we don't know right now uh, a simple set of generators for this annihilator. We know some of them, um, but that might give some intuition as to what, what, um, what cohomology you might be looking at. Okay, so that's um, super Poincare duality. Yeah, go ahead. Question by Nancy Wallace. If you consider looking at the B, bold B, N, K as GL2 times SN modules? Um, that's certainly one place that I think, uh, I guess no is, is the short answer, um, but it's, it seems plausible. That's one place you could get uh, the, kinds, the kinds of things I'm looking for. Are there any other questions now? Yes, Sean is asking if uh, R and K S fits into the study nicely. If R and K S, oh right, um, like from Hagelin Road Shimizono, you mean? Um, yeah. So in the actual paper, we look at different. Uh, you can assign different x powers to the the part of the picture that has thetas, right? So there's no real reason that it has to be either all zeros or all k's, k minus ones. Um, if if it's any constant, you get these R and K S modules, and uh, a lot of what we've proved carries over in that case. That's true. Uh, it's the case where you allow kind of non-flat pieces above the thetas is where it's a bit harder to analyze. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm almost done, so there'll be more time for questions soon. But uh, in fact, this is maybe one of the last slides. Uh, so um, if we take dimensions of this kind of bi-graded table I, I showed earlier, we get these uh, pictures here. So this these are the largest I felt I could comfortably fit on the slide. Um, but we've computed up to, uh, I'd say, n equals 
seven, I think, um, all these tables. And our, our conjecture is that the rows and columns of these tables are always unimodal. And again, this is something we could maybe prove using kind of direct algebraic means, but um, we'd like it to be the result of some kind of hard left shits theorem applied to some geometric object. That would be another, I think, useful way of thinking about, um, about these, these modules. Okay. All right, so uh, just to, to close, um, so I think these open geometric questions are, are particularly interesting. Uh, in our, the full version of our paper, we also talk about connections to work on uh, an SN action on positroids, a paper of uh, Billy Rhodes and Tawari. So we can uh, get a kind of uh, a Vandermond version of their work. And um, I think especially kind of unifying Sean's work on his quotient rings would be nice. Um, there are a lot of cases in which his objects are more general and some cases in which ours are more general. And um, it seems plausible there could be some kind of unifying object there, but um, maybe I'll bother him soon for his kind of geometric work that he's been thinking about. Um, and also um, Francois Bergeron has been doing a lot of work on kind of adding variable sets or maybe looking at kind of a limiting number of variable sets in both Berzon the bosonic and fermionic directions. Um, and he has some conjectures about the covariance of those things. And uh, it's not obvious to me yet exactly how that's connected to the, these specific types of randomons, but um, there, there should be a connection there as well. Okay, so uh, that's everything I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, let me start immediately with a question by Francois Bergeron. Uh, Francois, would you unmute yourself and ask it? Yes. Uh, so you mentioned at the end that there is uh, this uh, multivariate way of thinking about all this. And if you, what's amazing, that, that came from Mike. Mike Zabrocki, thank you very much for beginning this. As soon as Mike told me about this conjecture, I think the same, very same day we were in Banff and I looked at what happened with what, as I, what I was looking at, several sets of variables. And uh, what happened is the fermionic bosonic story comes, becomes the same. You can get everything about the fermionic using infinitely many sets of bosonic variables and vice versa or mixing the two. So uh, as soon as you go to infinitely many sets of variable in any direction, everything is linked to itself. And it's amazing. So I, and the physicists, they look at this corresponding between bosons and fermions. So I think we have a, a golden opportunity here to understand what physicists are doing in maybe a way that is understandable to us. So uh, I would preach for people to look into this. And this is not a question, it's just a comment. But I, I thank agree you that, very much. Yeah, thank you. I agree that, um, I mean, one reason I'm grateful to give this talk in front of this large audience is that it seems likely that eventually I'll give this talk in front of someone and they'll say, oh, you, you mean this? Uh, and that'll be both nice and maybe disappointing, but um, that hasn't happened quite yet. Uh, but well, it seems likely that will happen. Yeah. But anyway, it's a, it's a beautiful story. And it, it, we have very simple tools that help us to understand what's happening. Anyway, thank you again I agree. Thank for you. this very nice talk. Thanks. Okay, since we have no further questions, I would like to thank Andy again and with him also the previous speakers. Uh, thanks again. And uh, I'd like to give back the board to Laura.